everyone welcome to the uh, doctrinal discussion corner i'm sorry we are late for today uh we will have to go ahead we continue with the holy spirit and this session of the holy spirit we is going to gonna, gonna stretch it up to like four to five parts because there's a lot of things happening in the body of christ whereby People don't know that they have to depend on the Holy Spirit. A lot of people don't know that without the Holy Spirit, the work of the ministry cannot stand. The children of God will not know their left and their right. And without the Holy Spirit, many will not know that they are being misled. So as many that open up in this session of the Holy Spirit, joining us always on this dis uh, doctrinal discussion corner, you will come to understand a lot of things that there are so many false doctrine there are so many self-willed missions there are so many wrong spirit that is out there and there are so many uh what i call uh god of mammon influence ministration which we see on the platform today so i welcome you back this event is catching favor nathan um, and uh, catching favor worldwide evangelical outreach so our teaching on the holy spirit I remember last time we talked about uh, the importance of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, and the person of the Holy Spirit is a person, it's not a force, it's not something that people think, oh, it's, come, it's flying back and forth, it's a person, it's somebody, it's a person that you can feel, you can, it, it can speak through you, that is the person of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is already attached to you, so as we flow today, remember our structure, we talk of emotions, we talk about motives, we talk about our choices, we talk about the will of God. So when we come about emotion, when it comes to uh, the, the Holy Spirit, what are the who or what am I emotionally attached to? You see, we want to be emotionally attached to something and it has to be to do with the Holy Spirit. How will you be emotionally attached to the Holy Spirit? Because you have to start by the word of God. You know why? Because it's the Holy Spirit that revealed Jesus to us. It's the Holy Spirit that convict us that we are sinners. It's the Holy Spirit that lead us to speak because when you depend in the word of God and the, and the Holy Spirit by the word of God leads you, you will come to understand that you are not to lead yourself. The Holy Spirit has to lead you. So we have to know that your emotional attachment, I always call it my boundary. I always call it my space. My space is the relationship with, with our Lord Jesus Christ and it's been led by the Holy Spirit, by the word of God convicting me in the writings that help me to know what the Lord wants us to do, the right thing to do. And it has to be scripturally, it has to be scripturally directed and it's going to convict your heart to know the right thing to do. So your emotional attachment has to be with the Lord and have to be led of the Holy Spirit. That's your emotional attachment. When we look at our motive, based on your emotional attachment, your now lead to your motive. Do you want to? Do you want Jesus to be glorified in sin? Or so, what is your motive? You see, when you want to do something now, you, your conscience will tell you, "Oh, this is the right thing," or "This is the wrong thing to do." That is where we look at the motive. That is where the Holy Spirit convicts our conscience. To do the right thing do you want to sin against the lord jesus or you don't care you want to do your own you see this is where our motive can and it has to be attached it has really have to be attached to the holy spirit led, led by the word of god sometimes you want to do something a scripture will come to your mind but what did the bible say this is where we want to check you know whatever you hear listen to on the platform you will listen is it preaching according to the word of God? Am I convicted that I'm a sinner? Am I convicted to know that I am redeemed of the Lord? Am I convicted to see that Jesus has really set me free? I don't live the life of my own. It is the life that is in Christ Jesus. So you see, these are the importance of the Holy Spirit in the ministry. And that's where a lot of people are really getting it wrong. A lot of people are getting it wrong. So your motive you have to now lead to your choices you make. You see, with that choice, you now know that this is the right thing to do or this is the wrong thing to do. Then you make a choice. And this choice I'm going to make, look at it. I put, I put something here. Do you choose to accept a lie even when you know the truth? It's a choice. You have to make a choice. It has to be led by the Spirit of God. It has to be led by the Word of God. Then with that choice you are going to make, ask yourself, is it the will of God for me? You see, this is our structure in every topic we bring here. So, do you choose to 
give up your willpower. For example, your willpower, because somebody is doing something, everybody like it, and everybody following it, mm, you ask yourself, is that the will of God for me? The choice I'm going to make, does it draw me close to the Lord? Does it make me see myself as a soul? My, my soul, my name is written in the book of life. Will you continue to edify me to make heaven? These are where the will we make sometimes is very, very important. So, as we flow today, let us look at the will of God in our life. And everything we do in life, I'm telling you the truth, without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you make an error. Sometimes people make choices based on knowledge, educational background, uh, environmental influence, your social class, uh, economical class status, so many things because of emotion, because of feeling now. People make decisions based on that. And sometimes in the eyes of physical eye, because the Bible says we must be led by the spirit, not by the flesh. You see what I'm saying? Physically, when you look at it, oh, that's the right thing to do. But spiritually, is it the right thing to do? Where will it lead? The society wants us to do things in some certain way. And the way the body of Christ, the church is going today, a lot of false teachers and false preachers are on the platform. And so many people are so discouraged by what they see on the platform. Liars on the platform. What's my message on liars on the platform? Now, when we see all this, then you have to go back and ask yourself, who am I really serving? This is a personal individual decision to make a personal relationship with the Lord. You know why? The salt of the earth have to shine as the light, not as every other people. But you, the salt of the earth, we are the one that stand to speak the truth and live the truth. So let's move on. So why we must depend on the Holy Spirit? There are so many things I want us to share today. The Holy Spirit, like I said earlier, is a person is a person and not merely force. Last week we, did, we talked on this. I just want to go back a little bit, then we can now continue with the rest of other topics that are that are aligned here. So, one being a person, the Holy Spirit has feelings, he can become sad or angry, and others can insult him and blaspheme against him. Let's go back down. You see, we look at Isaiah 63 10. Remember, people are blaspheming the Holy Spirit today. Many people are blaspheming. Oh my goodness. Somebody will do something. They will come to the altar. He said, the Holy Spirit led me. Really? That's a blasphemy because there's a danger. There's a danger in, in saying the Holy Spirit because every other sin can be forgiven. You see, lying and blaspheming against the Holy Spirit is very, very unforgivable. That is why it is very wise for us to be very careful. That's why we always pray for wisdom, knowledge, understanding. And remember, and remember, David said, that word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. For us not to be able to sin against God, the Holy Spirit is there to guide. And you have to be somebody that is not in a hurry. That is why the Bible made us understand that we must not be influenced by the lust of the flesh, the pride of this life. You know, when all these things influence you, is the power of the flesh. You will, you, will, you will make decisions and you will do things against the will of God. And sometimes at the day of judgment, you will say, if I had known. Now, today we are learning not to sin against God. Let the Holy Spirit lead us so that we will not say, had I known on that last day. You know why? Because... I see a lot of ministers in Hades, in a total place of torment and darkness. When the trumpet sound, they are not going to get up. They will face the second judgment of condemnation. So brethren, I thank God for these teachings we are getting today. And I thank God for us to dissect the doctrines we find ourselves in. And where we find ourselves today, it is very important. So let us flow. People are really blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. And we don't want to do that. So we want to be very careful. Now look at Isaiah, Isaiah 63, 10. said, yes, they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned and became their enemy. And he himself fought against them. God, it, it can happen because this, this, then 
Israel, Isaiah saw was talking about the children of Israel, how they disobeyed God, and the anger of God was against them. We all know a lot of stories about the children of Israel. If you go back to the Matthew 12, 31, and so I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. We all know that. We are learning it today. We want to stick to this so that we'll be very careful in our relationship with the Lord. Acts of Apostles 7, 51 said, you, you stiff-necked people, your heart, ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors who always resist, resist the Holy Spirit. Now, we know a lot of things in the past. Our ancestors, our fathers, when they did something that is not the way God wants. People, they, a lot of forces. Now, if I want to go back, I know this is not in our Bible school session, but let me just go back a little bit. If you look at in the book of Revelation, when Satan was casted down, what did the Bible say? Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the accuser of the brethren is casted down. What is that word? Woe. Satan is casted down. So we feel a lot of things. And when angels were casted down with Satan, many fall in the sea, many fall on the mountain, many fall in the rock, many fall on the bare ground. All those forces. You see, when somebody pull a now we are the light. Jesus is the light, right? When people start pulling away, away from that light, what comes in is darkness. So the more they, they have, they are casted down, they are put away because remember, they already started rebelling. So as they were casted down, every mission they have agreed with Satan, they are here on earth to carry it out. Satan said, if you look at the book of Isaiah, look at the book of Jeremiah, I will arise and be like the most high God. I will sit in the congregation of the children of God. This is the mission of Satan, you see? And all those angels that were casted down, there are demons right now, they become deities and gods in so many areas, God in the tree, in shrine. That's why you see a lot of false preachers and false prophets, they go to shrines to get powers, they put so many stuff in their microphone. All these deities, demons operating in those areas, they, they kind of give them power to operate, force power to operate that will not generate, that will not lead us to heaven, you see. There's no other way whereby we shall be saved, only Jesus Christ. So when all these demons are casted, all these angels are casted and you see this demons everywhere. They not want to control people. That's why you see people do things at self-will. And they, as they continue, they keep doing something outside the will of God. And that's why you see a lot of people today, they kind of have a stiff neck. That's why Paul was talking. That's what Paul was talking here. He said, you stiff neck people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. They are not repented. Uncircumcised in the sense that they have not removed the lives of the sin. They have not removed disobedience. In, and, and, and obey, the, obey the Holy Spirit by the word of God. They are not circumcised. So they still believe in the olden days, ancestral demonic control, shrine worshipping and all that, so many deities that Satan introduced at that time. That's where this uncircumcised of ancestors comes in. Come, you see? So you always resist the Holy Spirit. A lot of people, it happens today, a lot of people resist the Holy Spirit. So as we flow, we look at where Ephesians 5, 4.30 now says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. You accepting Jesus as Lord. The Holy Spirit is the one that convicts your heart to see that you are, you are, we are sinners. He convicts our hearts and we repent of our sin. We accept Jesus as Lord. We believe in our heart that he died, he resurrected that day. We are saved today, we confess his lordship. We believe that we are redeemed, we are not to die. Because the sins we have in the past, none can redeem us. Only the lamb, the lamb, the righteous lamb, God himself came down in the form of 100% man. And remember, he was conceived. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. The sperm that of that. The sperm of human is not the one like the one that uh, conceived Jesus. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit so that he can have 100% blood of human in the womb of, of Mary. You see what I'm saying? So he knew his father is not the earthly father. He has the heavenly father. So he was born and he felt everything you and I felt is feeling today. He showed us example how we can. He was able to do what he did by the power of the Holy Spirit. So he is our sacrifice. He's the righteous sacrifice. No one can do it for us. So he, our redemption is in him. He, he, he came like 
like a lamb, even though he has the whole of authority in him, he has the power and authority, but he did not resist because this was his mission to save man, to return us to the relationship God has given to us from the time of creation, which Adam messed up. Jesus is the last and second Adam. You see what I'm saying? So our redemption is in him, right? So once we accept our freedom that we are saved, the Holy Spirit seals us. And that Holy Spirit sees us, it sees us towards the redemption. You see, to the day of redemption, we are going to be redeemed out of this end. So brethren, we do not resist the Holy Spirit. So this is what uh, Ephesians is telling us. He said, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were saved for the day of redemption. You and I are saved. So if you are somebody that kind of like to, there's something you say, you like it, ask yourself, is it what really what God wants for me? You, you know, this is where wisdom comes in. And the spirit of truth is the spirit of wisdom. So this is one thing the Holy Spirit lays. So we want us to go down there. This is what we learned last week, but I kind of break it down a little bit more. So we want to go down. The Holy Spirit, he has intention. He they direct us to God's will. And it, it, it kind of gives us discretion, making a wise decision. He loves us and he communicates. He testifies of Jesus and he teaches us, you know, and he prays through us. There are more, a lot of things the Holy Spirit does in our life. So if we look at Nehemiah, Nehemiah talks something in Nehemiah 9.20 said, You gave your good spirit to instruct them. You did not withhold your manner from their mouth and you gave them water. For their thirst, the Holy Spirit quenches our thirst. You see what I'm saying? You, when we say we thirst for the, when you feel thirsty, you you have to thirst for. It. Some people say, I, "I'm praying for the gift of the Holy Spirit." Yes, we are already seeing with the Holy Spirit for the gift to start manifesting. You have to thirst, and how do you do that? You have to create a relationship, draw close to the Word of God. These are qualities that distinguish in, uh, a person and this Holy Spirit. He teaches, he reveals Jesus to us, he quenches our thirst, the zeal, the desire we have, he knows from our heart what we want, the Holy Spirit helps to accomplish that. And we see, as you draw close to Christ, in the word of God, desire to obey God because you are a child of God. He draws you closer to conform. Every day you conform to the image of Christ of which you see truth. Truth is truth. You know what is like. You run away from lie. That Holy Spirit guides you. So we want to flow further. But when look at what Jesus told them. You and I, the church. But when the comforter is come, mind the comforter, you can use the advocate, the comforter, Come, when I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Did Jesus say he proceeds from the Father? The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father. And the Spirit of the Father, God, he directs you to the will of God. That's why when I started, we talk about the will of God. He's the Spirit of God. He's the Spirit of the Father. The Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is one. They cannot do without each other. You know, the, if you look at in the, in, in the creation of the... And let me just give you a little bit of a, a breakdown. The Father decides, this is what we are going to do. The Word of God comfort, that's Jesus. The Word comfort, He dwell among God. That Word is life. And who bring it to manifestation? The Holy Spirit bring it to manifestation. How? When you are convicted, you find yourself speaking in tongues. As I'm preaching now, it's the Holy Spirit that gives an utterance. Sometimes there are some words I want to speak, I want to speak, I find out I can't bring that word. Another word comes in the Holy Spirit. You see, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. Jesus has come and done it and bring God back to the Father. It is through Him we can go to accepting Him. The Holy Spirit takes over. As the Comforter is here between you and I, He is needing us. So we must not resist Him. We must not quench Him. We must not blaspheme against Him. It is very dangerous. You see? Look at in the book of Romans chapter 8, 26 to 27. In the, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. You see, he do, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through world, wordless groans. And he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit 
because the Spirit is it for God's people in accordance with the will of God. You see, this is where all these things are coming together. We do not know what to pray for. Pray for the Holy Spirit prays to all. But a groaning, that groaning when it comes, you see the words start coming. The Holy Spirit will not give you prayer points as you open up your mouth. You are crying to God. You are praying the Holy Spirit prays to all. Because I gave all example at the top. I just want to I keep using the Bible verses to prove to you all those topics. Like we don't know what to pray for. The Holy Spirit prays to all. This is where we get it in the book of Romans chapter 8. 26 to 27. So, I want us to understand, this is a problem in the body of Christ. People, a lot, do not know they have to depend on the Holy Spirit. We are sin with the Holy Spirit. I know, nobody can say Jesus is Lord without the direction of the Holy Spirit. A lot of us know Jesus is Lord, but there's one thing there, the self-will. Many don't go further in the word of God, desiring to make heaven. This, and because the purpose of Jesus came is for us to make heaven, to draw us back to our Father. You see what I'm saying? That purpose, it must be done. And that's the purpose of us in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit leads us to live, to conform to the image of God so that when the trumpet sound, we will make heaven. The redeemed of the Lord, that day is going to be glorious. So, but many that does not know, they are names will be erased from the book of life. You that is serving God, open up yourself, accept Jesus. That's the condition for making heaven. Your name is written in the book of life. Remember, in, 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 when, in, the, in the book of Luke, when Jesus sent the disciples to go and pray for people, don't take anything with you, cast out demon, all power in heaven or earth has been given to me, and behold, I give unto you power to turn up on serpent and scorpion and over every works of the enemy, and nothing shall be enemy sort of Jesus send them. When they went, they came back, they said, oh Lord, even demons bow, in, bow to us, bow to your name. Jesus told them, say, hey, don't, don't rejoice over that, but rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. The most important thing, brethren, the most important thing. So whatever we do in this life, our consciousness should remind us our soul is made for heaven. Our name is written in the book of life. Every day we need to conform to the image of Christ. So this is it. The Holy Spirit is the one that will help us to maintain our name remaining in the book of life because we are the children of God. We have received Jesus as Lord. And Jesus is our lamb, our sacrifice. He has redeemed us back to the Father. And we stand in the Father. You see, we remain in the word of God by the direction of the Holy Spirit. In the word of God, he says that you hear the word of God, you live by that word of God. James told us, said, we must be the doers and not the hearers only. We, we have a lot of hearers today, and we have a lot of actors on the platform today. We have a lot of uh, uh, comedians on the platform today because when they create all this comedy, people will be excited, they make them for themselves, but how many names are written in the book of life? If your name is written in the book of life, when people continue in this kind of human worshipping, human followers, liars, their name is completely removed from the book of life because they are going to go for the second judgment. May the Lord help us all in Jesus' name. So I want us, I want to move on. The Holy Spirit is our helper. He helps us. You see, I urge you, bro bro brothers and sisters, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. Now, that's in the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 30. We see our we pray for our ministers, we pray for the church, we pray for brothers and sisters. Now, in, in helping us to pray, like I said earlier, the Holy Spirit help us in our struggles, challenges. There are things every one of us go through in life. It wasn't a smooth journey for Jesus, so don't expect your journey to be smooth as well. We see a lot of buffeting of Christians. We see a lot of Christians that are being beheaded. We see a lot of things happening, but you know what? There's something people are not seeing. People, have, a lot of other doctrines have come to see that other doors that they are following is not helping them. A lot of people, the Lord is visiting a lot of people and many souls are returning to Christ. Look at the Muslim countries. You see a lot of them are returning, are, are, are accepting Jesus and the, and the Lord Jesus is kind of revealing himself to a lot of people. In all this thing, the enemy might think he's winning. Just remember the time of uh, Jezebel fighting against Isaiah um, the, the prophet of God. The prophet of God was running her task. He cried to the Lord, Lord, they have killed all the prophets. The Lord called him and said, I have a lot of prophets that will not bow to those the prophet of Baal. So also we have today, and I believe you and I are one of those 
that will not stand to fall to the prey and deceptions of Satan. We are written, in, our names are written in the book of life and we stand for the truth. So be that person, my brother, be that person, my sister, that will not bring yourself, that you see, you are royalty. Don't, don't bring yourself down to beggarly God living in lies and living in fabricated false, false, falsehood. That's, that is bringing yourself down from the glorious light in Christ Jesus. That God has brought us into it. So you see, so the Lord is reaching, winning a lot of souls. Even though they think they are buffeting Christians, they have liars, the devil is glorifying himself on a platform of liars and deceptive leaders on the platform. The Lord is going down in the streets, picking warriors, picking people to stand. You are one of them, brother. If you, sister, if you remain in the truth, as you know the truth, the truth you know you set you free. And when you know the truth, the Holy Spirit convicts you to know the truth, to stand for the truth. But if you resist the Holy Spirit, you know what? He's very sensitive. He pull back and you are left alone on your own way. So remember uh, one of our teachings, uh, our structure said, do you choose to give up your willpower? It's left for you because it has to do with your choices. You choose to remain in lie when you know the truth is there. We are the children of truth. Jesus is the truth. Okay. Now, so the Holy Spirit is our helper. When we are struggling, we pray for each other. And we see what we go through. We see what your brother goes through. The Holy Spirit help you to discern. Somebody asked a question last time. One of her sister asked a question last time. How do you discern when people are talking about you, when people are planning about you? And I will tell you what is the love of God. The love of God has no fear. The, spirit, the love of God has no fear. When you walk with love around people around you, you have no fear of what man can do to you. You know why? Because each day of your life, you have a personal relationship with the Lord. And during prayer, you see the Holy Spirit will lead you in prayer. So pray about everything around you. And the man, I want you to know another thing. You see, the word of God is very powerful and it's life. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. So what are you afraid of? Spirit of God, the love of God have no fear. Love has no fear. So why must we wait for the son who is talking about us, who is planning something about us? The Holy Spirit will guide everything you do where to go and where not to go. And the Bible made us to understand, even though we walk through the valley of the shadows of death, we shall fear no evil. That's what the Bible said. The word of God is life. So if the enemy is planning, the Holy Spirit guide, as long as you walk and let the word of God guide you, live in peace with all men, honestly, we get, you will not even fall into the prey of whatever anybody is planning against you. When it comes to discernment, you will discern what to pray for. And when you pray, those roads that look crooked, those things that look hard, maybe they are plotting riots here and there, kidnapping here. I will pray, the Lord will move you. You will not go through that road those, those kidnappers are. As we see things happening in the face of the earth today, the Lord will make a way for his own. So let us know. Let me, I'm responding to that sister. Let us not have this fear. Oh, what will happen to me? Oh, what will happen to me? So you see, this is what we want to understand. The Holy Spirit will guide us. Live in peace. When you have Jesus, you have peace. When you have Jesus, you have the light over you. And you live in truth. The grace of God will continue. Abundant of grace will be given to you. As many as you depend on his word. As you live by your word. And you desire to make heaven. I'm telling you, he will guide you. Now, death comes, I know. Death can come in any time. Any death. Take it from me, brothers. Any death that will come must pass through the Lord. The Lord must give permission. If God says no, no man can say yes. Don't listen to this false prophets on the platform. Somebody came up and said so that uh, 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 somebody can change the prophecy of God. That's a lie. You see, that's why I always encourage, I always educate, watch where you go for worship. Whatever they are teaching, if it's not in line with the word of God, run, run and run for their life. They are liars and self-willed leaders on the platform. So the Holy Spirit directs the prophecy of God. No force can change it. This teaching I'm teaching here, this is a prophecy of my life over 30 years ago. A time will come, I will start teaching ministers. I will start training ministers. Brethren, every day as time goes on in my life, all these things come to unfold. How can somebody say they will stand against the prophecy of God? That's a lie. And that's why we have a lot of false prophets today. False preachers today. 
then we see issues, they have no solution. You see, these demons that are casted down, angels that are casted down, have become deities, various so many gods today, they can give power to see. Brothers and sisters, they have no solution. Is it, is it Deuteronomy said that if somebody gives you a prophecy and it comes to pass, if they tell you to go and serve other gods, do not go with them. Today, there's a lot of them there, but we have to walk with wisdom by the word of God. Let us flow by the word of God. Study the scripture, no message. The Lord cannot give a message outside his word. His message comes scripturally. So let us not be misled by false liars. So we go. The Holy Spirit distributes gifts. We know in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1. All these are the works of one and the same Spirit. And he distributes them, each one, just as he determined. Now let's go, let's, let's understand that in the, the, the Lord gives the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the gift of the Holy Spirit, we were made to understand somewhere in the, in the book of, I think in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 talk about so many, many ministries the Lord has given to us. Lord, when Jesus had captivity, is captive, he had, you know, he gave gifts to men because Jesus has overcome the powers of darkness. Jesus has destroyed every power that stands against the gospel of his of the of the ministry, every power for all that to come draw close to the Lord, every power that stands against us, Jesus held those captivities captive. He gave us mission. I'm an evangelist, right? So God knows the gift of God, the ministry of God in your life. So it's the Holy Spirit that walked through you to perfect this ministry. Whether you're a pastor, or you're a, pre a preacher, not everybody in the fivefold ministry. There are so many departments that people walk. The Holy Spirit use them mightily in those areas. You see what I'm saying? So it is the Holy Spirit that gives the gift for us to function well in our life, in our ministries, in the church, wherever we are. We shine as the light, you see? So, you know, 1 Corinthians 14, 12 said, Even so, ye, for as much as you are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edification of the church. Let me tell you, gift of God is for the edification of the church. Gift of God is to edify the church. It must glorify Jesus in the body of Christ. Why is it the church? Jesus is the head of the church. Why? Because he is our sacrifice. He has destroyed the powers of darkness. He is our second Adam, Jesus. The at first Adam lost the opportunity of our fellowship with God. Jesus has to come to be a righteous. He must go by the blood. The life is always in the blood. He become our righteousness. So the life you and I live is the life that is in Christ Jesus. And now he, when, he, when he destroyed the past of darkness, captivity, captive, when he came down, he chose ministers, he gave us gifts so that we can stand and defy the church because he is the church. This is where the council starts from. So brethren, we have redemption. Many names are written in the book of life today because of what Jesus has done. We might rejoice for anything, but let us rejoice that our name is written in the book of life. This is where the ministry is. So there are so many life people live today that is not in the word of God. You will ask yourself, are their names written in the book of life? Have their name been erased? So sin in heaven, there is no sin. So we want to be very mindful. The Holy Spirit edifies us so that we can live in line with the word of God. So another place I want us to look at is 1 Corinthians 12, 8. For to one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues, but all these work that one that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he wills. So I just want us to understand it is the Holy Spirit. If people do something outside the Holy Spirit, you see, all these gifts will not start manifesting. 
All this gift is given to us for the edification of the church so we can perfect effectively in the body of Christ, wherever we are. And with the, the Holy Spirit, I want to take that because I always quote the scripture. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, how we can be able to stand each day in our life, is in the book of Galatians chapter 5. You go down from 22, it talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We talk of joy, faith, gentleness, meekness, tolerance, long-suffering. Those things, these are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So each one has a, is a way to me. I consider them as weapon to be able to stand. Even though, we, even as we have the armor of God, we have in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, if you read from verse 12. You see what I'm saying? So, the fruit of the Holy Spirit must come out of you based on the word of God. So, as we live each day, brothers, as we live each day, sisters, no, the Holy Spirit has given us the gift to be able to stand as children of God. He gave this gift for the edification of the church. Whatever department, wherever you live, the Spirit of God as a born again child of God, the Spirit of God should be in you. Mind you, the Spirit of God does not divide. The Spirit of God does not condemn. So there are people that condemn us, condemn people today. Mm -mm. The Spirit of God will not condemn. All the journey, the Lord, so far, the little experience I have, sometimes I ask, all the journey, the Lord leads me. The Lord can reveal something to me, take me somewhere, I see some certain things. Do you know one thing I've learned? The Lord never give anybody a bad name. It amazes me. That is how pure God is. You will see, you will ask me, did you see? I'll say yes. If I want to say, you see my mouth. Never speak negative against anybody. It is, it is, that's wisdom there. Rather speak the truth of what the enemy is doing. Why? Peter, get, Jesus talked to Peter, get it behind me, Satan. The Lord did not condemn Peter. We have to be very careful, the word we use. That really amazes me. All the journey the Lord takes me. He will take me to I will take me to a house of a preacher. I'll see what they do in secret. Like, you know, like I'll be like, you know, I'll be like Cinderella in the Wonderland. I'll be jumping back and forth. He will show me this. This is what resulted to this. This is why he did this one. I killed the wife and did all that. Just to get another wife. I call himself a pastor. You know, I'm like, really? All this, the Lord never gives any of his creation human being a bad name it amazes me so why you you and i look at god's own image and, and call them names and call them bad let's take that as an example when you have the spirit of god it has love it don't see fault it does not condemn because jesus did not come to condemn he came to save when we see people do stuff, what do we do? We pray for them. We say, Lord, please deliver. The devil has come to destroy this life. Two things, kill, steal, to destroy the vision God has. You know, two things the enemy want, we want to look at in any human being. What they do, there are two things the enemy wants to do. He has come to kill, steal, and destroy. One, to deal with this person, to torture this person. Number two, to destroy the mission of God in that person's life. So we want to be very, very, very mindful of everything we do and say about people. We see liars on the platform. I see people get involved, criticize, condemn, talk anyhow about preachers. Please, you want to be very careful. If the Holy Spirit is in you, you see, you won't come there to start talking all those things. Rather, the Spirit of God, we talk of the bad activity the devil is using them. Liars on the platform. Liars on the platform. I preach it. Liars on the platform. I, you know, when people lie, what is the Spirit behind it? So all that the Lord sends to me, never call any human being name. He has created and condemned. I've never seen it. And it really amazes me. You know why? Because the love has no fear. Love of Christ does not judge and condemn. That is the Holy Spirit. So as you hear my voice today, please learn to bridle your tongue. Learn. Like parents, their children do something bad, something wrong. They call their children name. This is dangerous. We are, are, we are supposed to bless and not to cause. The Bible says, know you not that you are little gods. Be watchful of word that come out of your mouth. If you are led of the Holy Spirit, honestly, bad word will not come out of your mouth. I learned this from the Lord. From when I was little, the Lord kept taking me out. You know, there are so many things I was, I want to say something. I will ask many questions, but why are they doing that? He said, because they don't know what they're doing. The devil is behind all this. 
what is the devil planning to do to, to take God's glory and to try to show or to make us see that God is not worthy. That's the plan of the devil. So human being, please do not condemn your brother, do not condemn anybody. Rather, when you talk of what people do that are bad and the force behind it, praise the Lord. So we all have seen the gifts and the, the, the gift. Take time, you can study this. We'll continue in our next session. So the Holy Spirit was present even during the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see in the book of Luke 135, the Holy Spirit was present during each stage of Christ's life when he when the angel appeared to Mary, the mother of Jesus, he declared, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And if we go further down, later on at the baptism of Jesus, which marked the beginning of his, of his uh, public ministry, the Holy Spirit was present and on this occasion could be seen in uh, a material form. When Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water. The heavens suddenly opened for him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming down on him. That's in the book of Matthew chapter 3 verse 16, you see. So during this, his ministry, Jesus taught about the Holy Spirit and had relationship with him. Furthermore, he urges his disciples to receive him in our life. We have to have a personal relationship with the, with the Lord and it has to be a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. How will you know when you desire to make heaven? That is the beginning doorstep, seeking for the kingdom of God and his righteousness because you have not known that you are a sinner. Jesus has paid the price for us, you see. So you want to progress for that. There's a purpose for it, to redeem us back to the Father, to make heaven. That is the goal. So the goal, our name is in the book of life. Then we progress in our Christian life. We do not, listen to me, we do not depend on human beings. This is our session today. Depend on the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus, depending on the Holy Spirit in baptism. I want to bring something down here. When you see, I love the example of Jesus Christ. When he was baptized, how long did he continue? He waited until the time of his ministry. A lot of people jump into ministry. And because they know them, some people say they get the calling fine. But you have to wait until you receive power. You have to wait. The time will come. The experiences you go each day of your life, they are training because you have to prepare yourself. I want to make heaven. I want to serve God. I want to win souls for, for the Lord. That's why the Lord came, to draw souls back to the Father. So that is, the, that is our mission. Now, we are not coming to gain from people. We are not coming to torture people because we are ministers. We don't want to depend on people. We depend on the Holy Spirit. So, it's an issue in the body of Christ. There's something I'm going to say here. There's something I'm going to say here. And that thing I'm going to say here is many people do not wait for the right time for the ministry. Many people do not depend on the Holy Spirit. And when people do not wait, they rush into it, the people suffer. I'm telling you the truth. We do not depend on the Holy on human being. I do not depend on human being. So if you look at it, Jesus, at the age of 33, he died. You can imagine all these years, he waited. Why can't we wait? I'm telling you the truth. You know why? We gradually learn the directions of the Holy Spirit. That's why we have a lot of problems today. We have a lot of false preachers. They want, to, they want to carry out themselves because they don't depend on the Holy Spirit. They get the calling. Yes, the gift of God will manifest. Yes, because the gift of God is without repentance. But mind you, what else are they doing then? When they call the name of Jesus and read the scripture, the Holy Spirit, the gift of God was manifest. The gift of God was manifest. But you know what? They don't wait. The leading of the ministry, they print pain on people that are under them, the members. This is where we have a lot of problems. That's why you see a lot of people come up, make up stories on the platform in the name of the Lord's sake when the Lord did not see. They create rules, traditions to please themselves when the Lord did not lead. We want to be very careful. Today, we will continue next week, next session with the stem Holy Spirit. It's not done. There's a lot we want to dissect. The working of the Holy Spirit in the body of Christ. 
we have to depend on the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. Go back to your emotions. Go back to your motives. Go back to your choices and the will. The will of God must be done in our lives. So, extending your question, somebody send a question from Matthew 12, 43. We are going to dissect that in our next session. Please join us. This session is always Mondays and Fridays. And we kind of break down doctrines that are affecting the body of Christ. The Lord gave me this vision. This vision, I saw the huge ark. I saw people worshipping this ark and they don't have shirts on. They have something around their waist. People, uncountable people a lot. All of a sudden, I noticed that the ark was kind of falling on the people. Hmm, I keep asking, why are this ark falling on these people? The Lord gave me the doctrine that is in the body of Christ. is rather hitting against the people. Why? Because they did not allow the Holy Spirit to lead them. Many are led by false teachings and false doctrine. Many false teachings have affected the body of Christ. Brethren, it's time we know the truth. The Bible says we shall know the truth, and the truth we know we do what set us free. So I encourage you, in every day of your life, sign the scriptures. Everything we have discussed here, send me a message. Send me, if you want to critique it, critique it. Study the scripture. Give me Bible verse to critique whatever we've discussed here today. And I want you to know everything we discussed here today is scripturally dissected, is scripturally discussed, and this is the purpose for the doctrine of Jesus Christ, for souls to make heaven and for as many that have misled to come to know the truth. Sending your questions, sending your 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 comments, sending anything, we go from there because we'll answer from next session so that we continue with our next session. So I pray the Holy Spirit visit you. I pray the Lord direct you by his word. And I pray that the Holy Spirit reveal Jesus to you and giving you the confidence that your name is written in the book of life because you are redeemed by the, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You are redeemed by the lamb that was slain. You are redeemed by Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a see you next week. Bye-bye.